Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about everything having a voice. People are still having a difficult time understanding small room acoustics. So once again, I'm going to try to break it down into two main categories and then assign some audibility, I guess, if you will, to those. But small room acoustics, we have two main issues. I think if we just draw an outline, you know, we're going to have pressure and reflections. Everything else can fall in those categories. So I think if we use this kind of dual paradigm, we'll be able to get a better understanding. It's difficult because we can't see sound, and I understand that. But you have to kind of make the leap that you can see it. And if you make that leap and try to visualize it, uh, wave and ray energy, I think you'll have a better understanding or at least a better chance of understanding. Pressure is low frequency. Reflections are mids and highs. So here under our outline, we can put low frequency here. We can put mids, highs here, right? Okay. Each has a sound or a voice. Low frequency pressure issues, you can hear them immediately. Maybe feel them is a better word. But you can uh, you can automatically sense them. You can automatically sense them looking at an RTA because there's no sensing involved. There it is. There's the picture of it right there. So each has a sound or voice. And we know room modes, they can provide bass boom or they can eliminate octave bands completely. So very, very powerful distortions. The last thing we want is too much of something and the last thing we want is not enough of something. So both of those extremes are, are not wanted. Reflections are mids and highs. Now, what is that all about? Well, that's reverb, right? Reverb is defined as how long a sound stays around in the room after it's been sung, spoken, or played. So it distorts speech, music, and reverb is a nightmare in churches. We do a lot of churches. and. Five seconds, six second, full range reverb times when they need to be one, one and a half, two seconds max. It's a big, big chore, a lot of surface area coverage. So that's the way that all works. So when we're treating modes, we want to absorb that unwanted pressure. You know, the typical response curve is that double peak, right? Well, we want to absorb those and take some of that energy out. And that's how we deal with exaggerated modal pressures, right? You must have powerful rates and levels of absorption. And this is where 95% of the products in the marketplace fail. Our products were designed as me, when I was a real estate developer, purchasing these products and using them in my buildings. Maybe 15% worked as advertised, and they were mainly in the middle and high frequency. None of the low frequency stuff worked. And then, you know, after further research, you understand that the materials used in the products can't absorb low frequency energy. So it, it's all a bunch of nonsense because they're claiming it does. Their test results maybe are showing that they do a little bit, but they don't ever get enough in a real world situation. That's the problem. They don't get enough to make a difference. In small rooms, we have a limited amount of space, so we need a lot of horsepower in our products, and that's what we do. Look at the great rates and levels on the ACDA here. You won't find a low-frequency absorber that does any better than that. That's a 230-pound unit. Can't throw it over your shoulder and carry it out of the room. It's not a tube, okay? It's a real low-frequency pressure technology with our carbon technology inside to increase the rate of absorption. Look at the rate. Look at the steep curve there. You can see it. Reflection management. We got to focus on that 125 to 500 hertz range because that is the frequency range of reverb. Same with middle and high frequencies. We got to get a lot at those and we got to do it in a smooth fashion. Look at the foam graphic. You'll see there our performance. That took eight years and $2 million to get. You won't find a better one. Trust me. That's a good good curve, and that's the kind of curve. Look at the curve of the foam and the ACDA. Look at the two together. You see some similarities. 
linearity. That's what you need. Look at the phone graphic. Look at the two competitors. Why would you treat a problem with another problem? Huge dips at 250. Make any sense? Like 95% of the stuff out there. So just remember, pressure reflections, those two that we have to work with. Everything else can be grouped. Every acoustical term you ever heard can be grouped into that outline. And remember, both pressure and reflections, they have voices. You have to listen for them. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.